What's up, buddy? Hey. Um, I don't know. I guess before we start, I was wondering if you can, um, I don't know, just talk about uh, the whole overall JP versus Harris debate and your key takeaways. Uh, I mean, I only watched, like, I think an hour and a half of the first episode because it doesn't seem like watching anymore was fruitful. Um, my main problem with Sam Harris is that Sam Harris seems to think that he can make claims that are with way more authority than what he actually can. Um, I think that once you're an atheist, you kind of lose the ability, well, in my opinion, but there are people much smarter than me that disagree with this. Sam Harris is not one of them, though. Um, but, like, I, I think that it's really hard for you to appeal to some sort of universal set of ethics or some sort of objectively, factually correct way of understanding, like, moral truth in the universe. You, you can do it while being an atheist, but there are routes that you go to do that. And Sam Harris just kind of assumes it as is. He doesn't actually, um, he never actually justifies any of his moral positions. He always just, um, he kind of, he kind of begs the question. He sneaks in the conclusion with his, um, with, with his premise, where he'll say something like, um, you know, we, humanity would be better if we increase well-being for everybody, therefore we ought to increase well-being for everybody. Well, okay, how do you define well-being? And then he's just very circular. Well, things that are better are well-being, is my problem with him. Uh, would you say that that has to do with, you know, the whole is ought gap that you talk about a lot? Yeah, of course. Um, can you, I guess, talk a little bit about that in context of that concept? Sure. So the problem with the is odd gap, so you have two types of claims that you can make. Um, you can make descriptive claims and you can make normative claims. So descriptive claims are basically statements of fact about the universe. Your hair is brown. Your, um, the rubber band is on the desk. Uh, cars travel at 60 miles per hour, right? These are like descriptive claims. Um, normative claims are, are statements of what ought we do. So something like, um, um, so something like, um, you know, we ought uh, treat people kind in society. We ought not murder people. Um, we ought tell the truth, right? Those are normative claims. Sam Harris claims that he can take a descriptive claim, like measuring some neurobiological property, and then generate ought claims off of that using well-being somehow. But he never establishes or defines well-being, which is like the big problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, at least my concern with that is that I feel like at least from my understanding of what Harris is arguing, is that he tries to like sort of skip over that whole debate mm -hmm. by like trying to uh, define bad into something that I think we would all agree with. Like, you know, I think he, like JP would call it like hell and Sam Harris would say like the worst conceivable experience, you know, forever or something like that, right? Yeah. So like, um, I'm just curious, like, uh, why do you think that that is not a good way to like, I guess, skip over that issue? Sure, well, there's two big problems. One is bad for Sam and the other is really bad for Sam. So the first thing is that um, w when you make claims like this, all you're really doing is preaching to the choir. If I were to speak to an audience, think of a world with the worst possible experience for everybody, and that world is bad. Now think of a world where experiences are better, the best possible experiences, that's good, and then there are all the worlds in between. This is called the moral landscape. Now he can make that, but the problem is that every single person, um, the, the problem is that like every single person is going to be envisioning totally different worlds. Like one person might envision a world with the most possible good is a world where women aren't sexually promiscuous and where um, men, you know, rule over everything and women stay at home. And, and another person might envision a world where, where women actually dominate the men, right? But so when you just, when you make these kinds of vacuous statements, which is what they are, they're vacuous because they don't really convey any real meaning of like the worst possible world and the best possible world, Sam Harris doesn't really get you there at all. He doesn't really give you a way to think about it. Um, and then the second thing is that if Sam Harris actually admits that and, and, and then tries to appeal to something else, like internal desires or something, he essentially moves into territory that's already had extensive conversation or literature about it, and then he has really no real contribution to make. Like things like egoism or whatever, where people have talked about these things like to death, or, or, or way in, in way more depth than Sam Harris ever has. Well, I want to sort of uh, try to think more about that first argument that you were saying. Mm hmm um, isn't it the, like, I haven't really read Harris particularly deeply or anything like that, but doesn't he argue that, like, the moral landscape has, like, multiple peaks, that if we were to imagine morality to be sort of like the topography of, like, a mountain range, you know, elevation, low elevation would be, like, the badness, and highest elevation would be, you know, whatever is good, 
it is possible for there to be like multiple heights or like multiple uh, optimal stages from around. Yeah, but again, if anything, that just makes this thing more weaselly and, and with and less authority. So like, what does that mean? What is a world where, well, like, here's the question I would ask Harris or any Harris fan. How do you define a world with maximal well-being? What does well-being mean? Sam Harris never has defined that ever, as far as I'm aware of. Even in its literature, he hasn't defined it. Well, the way that it's almost tautological, right? Because like, sure, but again, uh, if it's if it's if it's vacuous, then right, you're just saying like, well, what is well-being? Well, well-being is when everybody bees well. Well, okay. Well, what do you do if somebody disagrees with your definition of well-being? Well, they're wrong, I guess. Right? Mm -hmm. Like that's all you can say. Well. I mean, I think that that's a fair point, but the way that I imagine it, and I was thinking about this um, analogy, that, that it seems to be like, your, your argument seems to be like, well, Sam Harris could probably say things like, oh yeah, getting burned on the stove, that's probably bad, we can all probably agree with that. But he, but his morality can't address those other questions that you were asking, like, uh, you know, is a society better if, it was subserv if women were subservient to men or vice versa? Mm -hmm. And to an extent, I do agree with that. I don't think that he tries to tackle those things, but at the same time, um, I don't think that he needs to solve those issues for uh, his argument to be valuable in my eyes. The reason why I believe that is because I sort of imagine it like this, like let's say that we, neither of us had any idea of what math was. And let's say that someone comes up and says, well, I think one plus one equals two. And then imagine another person coming up and saying, well, actually, uh, what's one times infinity? And the first person says, gee, I don't know. Uh, the second person would say, well, you can't, def you can't, you can't really tell us this more complex issue. Therefore, the first statement, one plus one is two, uh, we should throw it away too. But does that make sense? No, because these are descriptive claims that we can like use other processes to kind of appeal to to figure out what the answer is. But like descriptive claims are much different than normative claims. Sam Harris claims that he can give us normative answers from from descriptive claims, which is the problem I have with Sam Harris. Okay. Well, then like what do you define as like normative? Like moral statements, what ought we do? Mhm. Mm but like how is that distinct from like like, for example, like if you want to increase your uh, your like muscle size or whatever, you, you have to like bench X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Like, how is that distinct from something like you should not kill someone? Um, well, we can make a moral, we can make a normative claim there and we can make a descriptive claim there, right? Here's a descriptive claim. Resistance training tends to increase the strength of people that do it, right? That practice it. Now, ought we uh, engage in resistance training? Those are two totally different types of questions, right? We can make a descriptive claim about what resistance training is and its impact on the human body, but whether or not it's something we should pursue is a question that science can never answer, right? Mm, okay. I think I understand what you're saying. So you're saying that, um, I'm just gonna repeat it back to see if, yeah. if we're on the same page. So you're saying that science sort of just like gives us a road to like, discovering what is actually happening whereas it can't really touch like how do we evaluate values yeah exactly okay um the way that i at least think about that right at least in the context of um harris's original claim that like you know everything like if every every experience being bad is hell Careful, so like, again, again, be careful with the definition because you're already snuck in your conclusion. Like, every experience being bad, what do you mean by bad? Well, like, um, every, like, if pain was a dial, it being turned up to, like, max or 10, Sure, but right? even that, even that, how you value pain, that's a value statement. So, for instance, going mm -hmm. by your same example, resistance training often involves pain, right? When you're trying to, you know push your max and cause muscle whatever to in order to grow you know more fibers that that's a painful process so why should one pursue that if it causes pain well yeah that's a good point but i think that um harris wouldn't like look at pain so one-dimensionally he would argue something like there are good types of pain and bad types of yeah pain but again the... how do you value that how do you decide what's good and what's bad that's the problem that's the whole problem mm -hmm. right or if you have an answer i'd be curious to hear it because sam well, doesn't well, I don't think that I have necessarily an answer. It's just 
this is perhaps just like an intuition on my part, you know, that isn't really yeah. justified. Which is what, but, which is the problem then. But then that means that all of Sam's work is pointless because it is all at the end of the day just an intuition, which he admitted as much to Peterson. But then the problem is, if that's your intuition and that's going to be your ultimate justification, then how do you tell the religious man that he's wrong for his intuition that God is real? Because you essentially, the strength of your claim is the same at that point. Yeah, but at that point, you know, what I would sort of uh, bring up is is probably something similar to, um, I don't know if you remember, like it's been a while ago where uh, you were sort of looking into uh, properly basic beliefs. Uh -huh. um, so I think like perhaps a similar idea happens there too. Like, mm. we're... I said, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, like, I think a similar thing happens there too because like, I think at a certain point, if a person were to seriously consider, you know, me suffering for like, you know, no, no personal gratification is bad. Like for a person to like actually consider that premise would mean for them not to be able to like function as a human being as we understand it. Does that make sense? No. Wait, can you say that again? So like, uh, maybe let me try to bring up that whole uh, properly basic belief thing just to make sure that we're on the same page. Uh -huh. um, so the idea of the pro properly basic belief is that there are certain ideas um, that are so basic, so intertwined into our biology that to seriously cast them into doubt is not worthwhile. So like sure. uh, an example of that could be something like causation. Yeah, sure. Like if yeah, so to the same extent, I think that it could be said about things More. like suffering or pain. Sure, but like Sorry, if you want to do that then, then again, like then Harris's work is all meaningless because he could have just wrote, instead of a book, he could have wrote like, um, um, he could have wrote, um, uh, he could have wrote one page and it just says like, hey, listen, morality is self-evident because it's just the things we feel and that's it. Like he doesn't need to... Um... I don't know why do you why do you feel that because I because like I I personally think that like if we can um if we can all agree like on a personal level that like to cast into doubt whether or not you know the worst pain for no reason is, is bad like I feel like if we don't have first grant that one premise I feel like morality becomes like uh, yeah, but the problem is like, how do you pointless. define pain? What's bad pain and what's good pain? Because there's some pain that we suffer that's good. Well, well like I think it would be like that qualifying phrase that I use, like uh, pain for no good reason or like pain for yeah, no but reason. I, again, so like this is really hard, and I understand that this is um, this is a hard thing, but like y you keep. You're, you're presupposing your, your your moral statements by you keep saying like well, pain for no good reason or pain for no bad reason. How do we decide what's a good reason for pain or a bad reason for pain? Like you, well, well, yeah, go ahead. well, I don't mean to interrupt you, but like, mm -hmm. I think that, that problem that you're witnessing, maybe it's just because, you know, I'm not uh, good enough in arguing what, what I'm trying to say, but I see a similarity in what you were saying and what would a Christian would say about um about like hey how do you really know that causality is a thing? No, I don't like, agree that morality can be a properly basic belief in the same way that like causality can be. And if you want to well, argue that, you can, but that's not Sam Harris's argument. This is a different argument now. And also, again, like mm -hmm. Sam Harris wouldn't need to waste so much time writing so many like books and everything. He could just say like, oh well, I just assume that all my moral shit is true and fuck off because that's my a priori assumption. You can't touch that. Like that would be like his whole, his book would be one page long, right? Well, it, yeah, but like, I think that th the main point isn't saying that morality is a properly basic belief, but only a smaller point about like, what is bad. Well, that's I think his, that, but that's his, that is like, when, once you figure that out, that's like a whole like moral system, like to define what is bad or what is good or what is virtuous is like the whole point of like, conceiving of a moral system is to define what is virtuous, right? Like, I'm pretty sure Kant has written, like, fucking thousands of pages on, like, what is good, on, like, categorical imperatives and whatnot. That's not an easy... It seems... Or I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not laughing to, like, be a circle. I'm sorry. But, like, it, it's it's one of those things where it seems, like, kind of an easy question, but, like, I guess maybe for, like, philosophy, it's, like, these things seem like easy questions, but when you actually think about them, they're actually the hardest questions, right?
right? Like a question as dumb as like, is anything real? Or can we know if anything is real? Or like, what is truth? How do we define that? Or like, what is virtuous or good? These are questions that seem very easy, but you can literally spend multiple lifetimes, you know, writing and pontificating on these things, you know? Yeah, um, maybe it's just like, uh, admittedly, I haven't really read into too much philosophy, but it feels to me like a lot of those endeavors, uh, and, and this is probably, I don't know, not, not totally justified or whatever, but I feel like a lot of those questions are ultimately uh, meaningless in my opinion. Like if we don't get back to like the material conditions, you know, of the lived life. And I think that like we get lost in, in you know what is bad, what is good, and such in really abstract ideas that I don't think will ever be applied for real life. Well, you say that, but we have to work from it. That's kind of the problem, though, is that we have to work from uh, you say abstract ideas, but I would say we have to work from fundamental ideas to get to more abstract ideas. Um, I'm using abstract in kind of the opposite way that you you did here, but like so, for instance, like um, you know, should like so here's the question, right? Should we um, do more things in society to empower women to um, have jobs as engineers, right? That's a question that's gonna go all the way back to like very fundamental or basic beliefs about how society and people should function and operate. Otherwise, you're just kind of like talking about positions that you, you can't really trace back to some origin. I mean, I, mean, I agree, but like, uh, at least I, I think that like, I think that if we agree on the first uh, premise of Harris, I think that everything else could be worked out. Well, yeah, but, but the like, first premise of Harris is the most important part of his work. <laughs> like, but that's the problem. You're asking me to just take it for granted. But I mean, if I take that for granted, that's literally like everything he talks about. The whole point of the moral landscape was to establish that he can get an ought from an is using neurobiology. Okay, well... And then also, if we just assume the first parts that you and I agree on what's good and bad, well, then getting there is just a matter of intellectual rigor, right? Well, what are the things that produce the most good that we agree on? And what are the things that produce the most bad that we agree on? There's not like an exercise of morality there. We just, we, we've already agreed on everything. And now we're just having an intellectual discussion on ways to get to our agreed areas. Um, if you don't mind me asking, um, mm -hmm. are you like what, what would be considered like a moral anti-realist? Correct. Uh, so can you explain a little bit about like what that would entail or what that means? So I don't believe that we can truly make moral statements. I don't think so. I don't believe in anything supernatural or like anything that exists outside of the physical realm, right? So I'd be a physicalist, and then I don't believe that moral fact are something that can or things that can be discovered in the natural world. So I don't think we can truly like the statement like murder is wrong. I mean, we can conceive of a moral system and then kind of make statements within that moral system, but I don't think that moral system actually exists in the natural world. I think it's just kind of like um, a human imposed thing on society. Uh, okay, so then what do you use? Because then what do you say something like, if, if you were to say something like, more, like, what do you say murder is wrong or like no. you ought to not murder? No. So then uh, what would you say in respect to murder? Um, no, not, nothing. I, I don't make statements. It's kind of like saying, what would you say like in respect to like trees falling over? I mean, like it's a thing that happens. I can give you descriptive facts about it, but I can't, I, I don't believe in normative claims, I guess. Okay, well, I mean like, because at least this was my perception of, of what you meant. But like when you talked about like uh, your uh, preferences and like. Yeah, I have a you... set of desires and I try to fulfill them. I think my position is like egoism or something. Mm -hmm. So what do you say like in context of that egoism that, you know, when you say things like I'm an egoist, but I ultimately think that like I should pay taxes because paying taxes means that like uh people get benefits and when everybody else is 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 uh you know fine that does ultimately better for me is that like essentially the argument that you make yeah pretty much yeah so like you don't think that that's a prescription what do you mean by that like aren't you saying like we ought to pay our taxes in, in those kind of contexts not ought in a normative sense but i mean ought and like i would i would hope you to and i'm going to do my best to incentivize you to do so by appealing to your own desires but i don't think i can make like moral claims about whether or not you ought murder or anything i think there's a difference oh can you explore that a little bit please 
Um, sure. So I have a set of preferences and I imagine that most other people have a set of preferences. When I say preferences, I mean like desires, right? So for instance, I think most people desire like bodily autonomy and then to be happy and to not be fucked with and shit. So if I um, exist in a society and one of my desires is to not have people steal shit from me, then my goal for constructing said society is for all of us to agree that anybody that steals shit is going to be punished adequately enough that they don't steal shit, right? That's kind of the, the goal. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question is like, why would you um, be opposed to calling that like a, a moral code? Um, cause it's not morality. Cause I don't make statements of morality. I think there's a huge difference. Well, I mean, I mean, like, I guess this might come down to like, how do you find morality? But like, at least the way that I think about morality is morality is just like a system of, you know, behaviors that are like incentivized and disincentivized. Um, I mean, if that's your definition, then sure. But I don't think that's like a conventional definition of morality. I thought that morality explores like what are virtuous statements pretty much. Well, I can look it up real quick. Hold on. Morality is the differentiation of intentions, decisions, and actions between those that are distinguished as proper and those that are improper. Yeah, so morality is like an exploration of what is virtuous and not, I think. In terms of just well, like stating rules or preferences, I don't think that most people would consider that to be morality. Well, proper is curious there because like it seems to be elastic where it could encompass things like virtues, but it could also like, I think in my opinion, it could also like fit in your ideas. I could, but I but most philosophers, I don't think treat it that <sighs> way. It, I mean, that it's could, but we're getting into semantic areas where that we're moving away from like unconventional use of terms, I think. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, it might just be like a problem of semantics because like, at least from the position that I'm standing at, like what you're saying doesn't seem to be so much different from what at least I think Harris would say. Like, I think your argument about like, how like we can, like once egoism is established, like there are like ways in which we can determine what we ought to do, or though not like in a, the same moral sense, right? Um, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not equipped to, I, I just, I fundamentally disagree. I don't think that I can, I don't ever try to make ought statements. I could just say that I would prefer somebody would do this, but I feel like there's a different level of, um, there's a different like claim being made when you start making ought statements. So like, I don't think I can tell anybody that they are immoral or not virtuous. I don't think that's possible. Um, I don't think that's the same as just saying like, I wish you would act in a certain way. And all of a sudden now I'm making like a moral statement. I don't think that's the same thing. But, but you seem to think that those are comparable, but I disagree on that. So, I mean, that's kind of like a fundamental disagreement, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just I'm curious. Um, can you like, because uh, I don't have like a tablet or anything around me. Can you, because you pulled up like a definition of morality. Mm -hmm. Can we like perhaps maybe like see other definitions and, and like in what context they exist? Wait, see other definitions. What do you mean? Yeah, like, uh, I assume that when you just define morality just now, I think, I think you just Googled it. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at Wikipedia, yeah. Yeah, so like, I don't know, like, maybe there is a particular definition of morality from like the perspective of uh, a school of philosophers, as opposed to like the generic, you know, use of morality. Um, I... Wait, so do you want to just, we can go looking for a definition that agrees with your definition? I mean, we can do that if you want. No, it just, I, it well, doesn't further the argument at all. Or, I mean, I like, I can, I guess for the sake of the discussion, I can like agree with how you define morality. I just don't see how that changes anything. Well, cause like, cause at least to me, it seems like the main point of disagreement right now is like, what does morality actually mean? And what does it mean to say ought? And what does it mean to like say like, oh, I prefer you. like to me, like saying something like I you ought not to murder or I prefer you not to murder seems to inhabit a same space to me and to you. Oh, I think that the strength of those claims is very different. So like, I think Sam Harris can argue Happy that one some year, worlds buddy. 
also are like objectively this guy. better like, than other says worlds. Like, like right? a lot. That's why he says, like. uh, you know, a world with the best possible experiences and the worst possible experiences. He says that one is better than the other. I don't think I can make a claim that any particular world is better than another world. I just make the claim that, you know, there are worlds that maximize my personal experience more than others, and those are the ones that I personally prefer. But I don't think I could call that world better or worse than another one. Or I guess I could, like, in regards to my particular self i guess but like i don't think any i don't make like any like universal moral claims or anything like murder should ought not be done or stealing ought not be done or something like that well because like would you be opposed to saying something like a world in in which like for example someone routinely steals from you mm -hmm. like would you say like that is worse than a world where that doesn't happen um like all all things all other from, things yeah equal. I, I, sure yeah from my perspective yeah sure so like couldn't it be the case that someone could argue like a world where in uh everyone's desires you know are uh are like actualized mm -hmm. is better than a world where everyone's desires are are not actualized like would you say that that is better than than the, than the latter yeah i guess from my perspective sure most likely it would be, yeah. So, like, why wouldn't you take the the next step in calling that, like, objectively better? Especially in the context of, um, like, if... Because the second example was more so to the expect of um, everyone's opinion. So, like, everyone thinks that it is better. Um, I mean, I guess, like... I, I think, like, our disagreement is that, like, on a practical level, like, me and Sam Harris probably agree on almost everything. But I feel like on a fundamental level, he claims something much stronger than I do. But you want to focus on the practical, and you're saying, well, practically, isn't it the same? It's kind of what you're asking over and over again. And I, and I agree that, like, practically, I would probably completely agree with Sam Harris. But I, I just, it feels to me like the strength of his claim is so much stronger than... What, what I would ever claim like again like he claims that he can get ought statements from his statements and I don't necessarily believe in like universal ought statements or that I or that you can have like moral morality be defined by like neuroscience or something like that um th that I can only I, I don't know I just I guess maybe it sounds like I guess to you it's sounding like just semantics or whatever but to me it feels like a pretty strong distinction even though practically but, our stuff plays out the same yeah but like doesn't like I feel like in my opinion that would very much change my relation to the argument if i think that like practically speaking in every real real world instance i would agree with sam but in this hyper specific abstract way i don't agree with sam like to me that would like like that's sort of like why i think like it's sort of bizarre like um how much it seems that you dislike sam because like it seems to me like you're pretty much in agreement like you're like well, no, like no, 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 no. So the problem is that if I was to try to argue my value system with somebody else, if we had fundamental disagreements stemming from like very foundational things, I would acknowledge that I can't ever have a conversation with this person. And so what I would do is I would either, depending on the scenario, either kill the person or or legislate it in such a way that the law prevents this person from acting in ways that are contrary to my desires. Whereas Sam Harris seems to think that he can make arguments that every intellectual in society would, would somehow be compelled to believe in is like kind of like a fundamental difference so for instance if i was talking to somebody that really truly felt that men were superior to women and was impervious to like intellectual fact then i would have to find a way to either legislate this person person out of society to do something else whereas harris seems to believe that well no like well look we can show people that you know using neuroscience like this is actually the truth that we can make true claims about what is moral or what is immoral and, well, I, and I don't well, yeah sorry go ahead well, sorry i don't I'm not sure, like, I, I completely follow that, like, that idea or, or that train of thought because, um, like, ultimately, ultimately, I think that Sam w would agree with you. Like, he wouldn't be like, hey, like, if there's a sexist around that's not hiring a woman, he wouldn't be like, hey, let's stop. I'm going to debate you. This is objective morality. He'd probably be in favor of legislation against that employer, right? Yeah, but I, I, again, like, I, I don't think we disagree on any of the practical. Like, the difference would be that, like, if there was a person walking around murdering people, like, here are statements that I think I can make. A person that's walking around murdering people is doing things 
that that don't that would probably violate my preferences and i would try to stop him from doing it because they violate my my desires but that's it i don't think he's wrong in what he's doing and i don't think what he's doing is like by any objective metric bad he's just he's satisfying his preferences in a way that goes contrary to mine the act of him killing somebody isn't bad in and of itself because he's his desires are being fulfilled so from his perspective it's actually a good thing um but from my perspective and the perspective of the person being murdered it's generally a bad thing though that's the only that, that's the strongest claim that i think i'm capable of making whereas it seems like harris feels like his claims are much stronger that he can look at all possible worlds and find some worlds that are universally better and universally worse that, that that's the only thing i'm thinking like in terms of practicality we're going to agree probably on almost everything i would probably agree with sam harris on practically speaking but i just feel like he thinks his claims are much stronger than they actually are which is why he runs into a huge problem with peterson when Peterson tries to back him into a, where does your moral fact come from? And Harris has no a answer whatsoever and just starts making some weird vacuous appeals to, to, to tautology or, or to science or whatever that doesn't really answer any of Peterson's questions is what it feels like to me. Okay. Uh, and I think, I think we're pretty much like already understand like where we stand or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I guess my final question to you would be like, what value do you derive? What value do you uh, derive from um, from like that disagreement, like on a foundation of philosophical level? Um, well, like I'm, if it isn't pragmatic. It, well, just like an intellectual one, I guess. Like, yeah, but what's the point of that? Like, what's, um, what I the, enjoy. What value it, well, one of my that? desires, I guess, in life is I like to discover things that are true. That's kind of like one of my big driving things. I'm just interested in like reasonable arguments and figuring out like what the most true positions of, of things are. It's just something that I enjoy. But from a pragmatic level, I would prefer Harris's world to Peterson's world, even if Harris has worse arguments. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. I, th I think we're pretty much done now. Sure. Uh, but yeah, thank you for uh, having me on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the talk, buddy. All right, see you.